So step number one, a hexokinase enzyme transfers a phosphate group from adenine triphosphate onto glucose at carbon number six to form glucose six phosphate. So adenine triphosphate becomes adenine diphosphate. The role of a hexokinase enzyme is to transfer a phosphate group from one molecule onto another. So in this case, hexokinase transfers a phosphate group from adenine triphosphate onto glucose 6-phosphate. So the name hexokinase, it is a hexo because it is working on a 6-carbon sugar molecule. So as a science student, always ask yourself, what is the importance of phosphorylation? Why should glucose be phosphorylated, by the way? So the presence of a negative charge, a negative charge on glucose 6-phosphate, it makes glucose more polar and therefore it increases its chances of undergoing glycolysis. Another very important point for you to note is that the presence of negative charge on glucose molecule prevents glucose from moving across the cell membrane. You know one of the major important properties of um, a cell membrane is that it has got both positive and negative charges. So the presence of negative and positive charges on the cell membrane will prevent glucose 6-phosphate from moving across the cell membrane. So step number two is isomerization. So phosphoglucose isomerase transforms glucose from glucose 6-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate. So glucose 6-phosphate is an aldose while fructose 6-phosphate is a ketose. So phosphoglucose isomerase transforms glucose from glucose 6-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate. So to expose the aldehyde group and a keto group, the sugar molecules have to, and to be transformed into an open chain conformation to expose them, those groups, as shown here. So another point to note is that the sugar molecules are less active in cyclic form. So they have to be converted into an open chain conformation so that they become more active. So step number three is phosphorylation of fructose 6-phosphate. ATP is normally used. So phosphofractokinase adds a phosphate group onto fructose 6-phosphate. It adds a phosphate group onto fructose 6-phosphate so that it becomes fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. So in this case, ATP also loses one phosphate group to form ADP. We go to stage number two. So stage number two involves splitting of fractose one six bisphosphate. Stage number two involves splitting of fractose one six bisphosphate by aldolase enzyme. So fractose six one six bisphosphate is um, a bilateral molecule. It can easily be split into two equal parts. When you look at it. It can easily be split into two equal parts. So aldolase enzyme splits glucose one fructose one six bisphosphate into dihydroxyacetone phosphate and um, glyceraldehyde three phosphate. So dihydroxyacetone phosphate does not lie on the disect pathway, and it has to be converted into another molecule of glyceraldehyde three phosphate. So at this particular stage our pathway branches into two. And therefore, the rest of the molecules that will be produced will be two because one will be produced on one branch and another one will be produced on the second branch. So this process is normally facilitated by triose phosphate isomerase. It's working on triose sugars. Thank you.